Scott, uh, what can you say about the defensive performance by Daniel Gafford in the closing minutes of regulation and then some of the plays he made in overtime? Big plays, big plays. He's, I mean, he's been terrific the moment we brought him in. Unfortunately, you know, he tweaked his ankle, but he's back and playing good basketball. He's finishing around the rim. He's a lob threat. He's, I, I love the fact that he contests uh, perimeter shots. And you got to really lock in when you shoot over him because that, 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 long, that long arm seems to go forever and he's athletic and he uses his length. Uh, I've seen guys that are athletic, but they don't play athletic, but he uses his athleticism and he's 20, what is he, 22 years old. So he's going to continue to continue to improve. And with what he has seen in his early start with us, it's been really fantastic. And it's, uh, he gives us a, a much needed lift um, at that spot. And you guys scored, I think, 12 points in overtime and, and Russ had, I think, 10 of them. Uh, what do you think about the way he played in, in overtime? Yeah, I thought he was selfish all night long. I don't like the way he played. He should have had another triple-double. He only had nine assists. Too many, too many mid-range jump shots. No, he played great. He played great, obviously. You know, he made big shots down the stretch. It's crazy that we're four for 27, and he made three threes. Um, he's, I mean, he's a winner. We say it all the time. He's a winner. We're, we're building something um, good, and he's going to be a big part of our success. We're playing good. We're healthy. You know, we obviously we missed DB shooting tonight. But Russell made big plays defensively. He was switching off on some really good, talented players and getting stops. And Brad, did, Brad didn't have his, his best shooting night, but he still just kept playing and competing. I thought he really took the challenge in guarding Ingram down at that last um, part of the game. But, I, I mean, we gutted the win out. You know, we didn't have, we didn't have our – they always say when you, when you go on a long, you know, 12, 11 or 12-day 12 trip, like 8,000 miles, that first home game is tough. And, you know, we got back-to-backs, but it was great to get a win tonight. PA. Hey, Scott, um, I, I apologize if you've been asked this question before this season, but do you have a specific coach, a specific assistant who handles challenges? Um, yeah, his, um, his last name is Westbrook. <laughs> um you know i i try to i i I try to listen to the players and i've 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 kind of know who to really lock into Mm -hmm. some players will say it and and i'm i look back at him thank goodness that i didn't call it um landon landon tatum does a great job and that's a that's a high stress job because i'm always on him on everything and he handles it well and but he's been He's been rock solid for us. And, you know, not only that, but some of the, some of the things that I need right away, if I want to show a player or if I want to look at it so I can discuss it with the referee with a, you know, not a bang, bang decision. I can look back Mm -hmm. and he's great. I mean, he's, he, he, I'm sure he has help as well, but I think we all kind of chip in, but tonight it was Rui said, coach, he, he hooked me and I I've seen enough of, certain players in the league and, and I, yeah. and I, I trusted him. Russell trusted uh, Rui as well. And they said, let's challenge it. And that was a big, that was a big decision and a big play. I wish I can get credit for it, but I can't, it was, it was those two guys. Yeah. And on that play specifically, did you like Rui, you know, coming over the top and trying to, you know, on, on the entry pass and not yeah. sitting behind him? Yeah. We wanted to, you know, we wanted to try to we front him if we can, if not, we were going to double from the top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought he the thing I loved about it, he felt the hook and he had to continue to fight through it. If you just accept the hook and concede, you're not going to get those, you know, calls either way. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was a that was a big, big play. And obviously that Russell's challenge was was huge for us as well. Because it took a yeah, it took a time out, but that's always a tough decision for every coach. Kareem. Hey, Scott, I just wanted to ask you, what's to say about your guys? You know, tonight, like you said, coming off the long road trip, all those miles, um, 
Pelicans went on that run in the fourth quarter, it would have been real easy to kind of just kind of roll over and say, okay, we just don't have it tonight. And a poor shooting night from deep. Um, what's to say about you guys that you guys kind of kept fighting and found a way to do it? Um, we, we've been, you know, we're, we're gutty, you know, we're scrappy. We're going to continue to fight. we got a lot of things thrown at us. And that was a, that was a tough trip to come back and, you know, play a, a, a game. You know, I didn't, it's, um, you know, I was on West Coast time uh, last night. I didn't want to go to bed till like three o'clock in the morning. Um, but I'm sure the players were the same way. And I got up early. And so it was today, it was a tough day to, to get in. You know, you're kind of like in a fog. But I, a couple of guys didn't handle it well. But a couple of guys came through. And that's what a team is. You know, you're not going to have everybody playing well at all, at all times. We were down a man tonight. And we came in. I thought I thought Neto was. I mean, obviously you could throw a lot of guys that played well. Gafford and 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 Alex started the game, not missing a shot. And then, but I thought Neto came in and really changed it because we really had really not a lot of things going for us. But his uh, his tenacity and just his will, his will, I think just made made us. Uh, got us some stops and some opportunities to get out and transition to get some easy. And then Russell's layup that it probably won't even, you know, talk about it. that layup was so hard over Steven Adams that only a few guys in the league can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Fred. Hey, Scott, I, I know you talk all the time about how many games you watch around the league. Are, are, are you standings watching at this point? Like what, what is the mentality of following just kind of the day-to-day -day standings when so many teams are kind of, kind of, you know, plugged together? Yeah. I mean, I don't know who the Grizzlies playing tonight, um, but no, I just, I try to focus on ourselves, but I, I watch, I watch the games. I have nothing else to do. I love the game. I'm passionate about what I do and I'm trying to figure out ways there are guys to, to get better. I watch it. I, I, I follow, I've been reading box scores since I was in the seventh grade and I love it. I love it. And I still do get up and watch it at night. And if I miss a game, I look at the box scores the next morning. I mean, I follow it. I don't know if every player does. I mean, league pass is the greatest invention ever. And I wish, I wish I would have had it uh, as a player. But yeah, I watch. I watch all the time. I'll watch game. I'll watch the game tonight when I get home. What What is I guess the balance there? When I I saw you stayed late to shoot around after that game too. So what's What's the balance of feeling that way when the shot's not really going for you, but you guys are still able to to pull out a big win like that? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean that was a testament to my teammates. Uh, I told them that during the game, after the game. Um, and we all knew that collectively, like we wouldn't have, we probably wouldn't have been able to close out a game like this early in the year. You know, that just shows our growth, our maturity. Um, and obviously Russ making some big plays down the stretch too for us. Um, you know, we, we just really fought hard. Gafford came in, had a lot of blocks down the stretch. I will cleaned up a couple of them, just getting hands in there and, and making it tough. These guys are strong, athletic, you know, B Ingram had a great night tonight. Uh, we did a good job of kind of frustrating Zion and being vertical with him. Uh, but that was a special team. Like, they're on the same boat that we're in. Uh, and, you know, we just we just willed ourselves. We willed ourselves to a victory tonight. Are you are you standings watching at all at this point with 17 games left? 100 percent. You know me. I'm, I'm always I'm always eyeballing it. Uh, you know, we're I don't know what we are now. I haven't checked tonight after we won, but uh, I knew we were one game behind the play-in coming in tonight. And I want to try to see if we can squeeze a little further. I know it's tough with these games counting down, but, you know, uh, I think if we can put a nice little run together, I think we can we can give ourselves a nice little chance. Chase. Brad, you, you mentioned the, the defense from uh, Daniel Gafford down the stretch and in overtime. Have, have you ever seen a teammate uh, do something like that uh, defensively, that extended of a stretch like that um, in, in that key of moment? No, the not block shots the way he was. Uh, he was super active. Uh, and I know he was dead tired. I know we were all retired. 
Uh, but he kept meeting them, those big guys at the rim. He kept battling with Steven on the boards too. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, he had his work cut out, but he stood his ground for sure. You know, he, there was some big guys out there and, uh, he, he did a great job of standing his ground and, uh, making them try to finish over him. They couldn't do it. And as you and Russ, uh, go up against teams, um, obviously they have to kind of pick their poison. What was it like to see Russ go off the way he did in, in overtime tonight? Save my ass. That's for sure. Uh, but, you know, he he definitely – he's been playing great since All-Star break. You know, he's healthy, which is the biggest thing. And, you know, the, his biggest concern coming into the years, you know, if he's healthy, he he loves what he's able to do on the floor. And uh, and we know what he's capable of doing too. So, you know, he's just he's just finding his groove. He's just constantly uh, bettering himself, bettering his teammates. And, uh, you know, he's an unbelievable leader. You know, his, his main thing is, is trying to win games, whatever that looks like. So – uh, his play has been great. He was exceptional tonight, and uh, we're going to need him to continue to be that way. Yeah. Brad, you, you've said consistently the last couple of years that the, the important thing for you is to win, to win more, to have more, more of a chance to win. So what does it mean to you that you all are winning and you've put yourself in a position to have a chance to get into the playoffs now at the end of the season. Uh, I mean, it speaks volumes, you know, it's, uh, it's always tough. Cause that's something I've been, when my name was buzzing, that's all I heard earlier in the year is trade Beal, trade Beal. You know, it wasn't, you know, anything other than that. And so me knowing who I am and just sticking through it, uh, you know, it's a testament to, you know, what we did as a team this year. Uh, you know, we fought through COVID. We fought through some crazy times, a lot of injuries. Thomas Bryant out for the year. Uh, you know, so it was it was a little rocky in the in the beginning. You know, and you know, once we got our full our full guys back together um, and got our rotational minutes back right, you know, we were able to put some put some streaks together. So, uh, you know, this this is this is a testament to we got 15 plus you know left. Uh, we're counting down. So. Uh, you know, we got a nice little push. We got a nice little schedule before before the end of the year. So we got to take advantage of it. Did the did the two winning road trips show you something that might things might be a little different with your group this year? Uh, for sure. We show some resiliency, you know, uh, in order to be a good team and playoff team, you know, you have to be able to win on the road. Granted, you know, the atmospheres aren't aren't the same. Uh, but still that same concept applies. You know, we, you have to be able to go into somebody else's house and and be able to win, uh, and it's crazy. We've we've done that, and we continue to do that. And uh, we just got to protect our house now. We got three or four games here, and then we go back on the road again. So it's uh, it's been it's been very exciting to see see our growth throughout the year. Ba for sure. Neil, Brad. Obviously, you hold yourself to high standards, and you know I'm sure O of nine is. And three is not what you want. What did the Pelicans do? And what did you see on that last shot in regulation? Nothing. I missed, Neil. I got a great shot. And I missed. Just like I missed the other eight threes along with it. Anything you felt the Pelicans did there or just an off night? Uh, I mean, it's, you ever heard the Monica song, just one of them days? You ever heard that? It, that's all that was. It was just one of them days, man. You know, it's, I'm happy we got the win. Uh, I'm not worried about numbers at this point. Like, obviously, I want to play well and, and contribute better than what I did tonight. Uh, and I 100% hopefully we'll do, we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, all I care about is our growth and, and guys winning and and uh, and us having a winning spirit, you know, my teammates uplifted me tonight and encouraged me to just stay in the game. And everybody stayed engaged and made big plays and stepped up when we needed to. So, uh, hats off to everybody. It was a team win. And I damn sure ain't do nothing. Fair enough. Thanks, Brad. Chase. Um, Brad, I have a bit of a random question that might be better uh, for a practice, but I noticed in pictures from the last few games that you. You write on your shoes. Uh, I'm curious, what, what do you write on your shoes and, and what is the significance of, of what you write? Uh, I write two scriptures, uh, Philippians 4.13. Um, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then I write Galatians 9, 6, 9 on the other side, which is, do not become weary in doing good for at the proper time you shall reap a harvest if you do not give up. You know, that's kind of both individual and like team, team oriented. Uh, and then I write my two boys' names. So I write Deuce on my left side and, and Bray Bray on the right. And that's what I go out there and hoop for. And obviously wifey too, she, she knows that. What was your approach there toward the end of regulation and over time as you uh, were able to deny Jackson Hayes and, and Zion a few times there in some clutch moments? Um, really just um, what I always say, you know, I have a defensive mindset first, offensive second. You know, I can get whatever I can on offense. I'm not really worried about like the offense side of the court. I mean, I'm, that's going to happen because I got guys that'll get me the ball. Other than that on defense, you know, I got to protect home. I'm always saying I got to protect home. I can't let them come inside. You know, and if it does, I can't let it go down easy. You know, I'm either foul you or I'm either block the shot. As simple as that, you know. But other than that, I just, you know, protect what's, you know, protect what's important to me. And that's, you know, the basket. <laughs> Neil. Hey, Daniel. Scott said before the game that, you know, if you would like to keep your minutes, you know, below 20, obviously with the game going into OT, you were playing crunch time. How did you just feel, you know, conditioning wise, uh, physically and things like that? I mean, I felt great when I uh, came out because, I mean, I don't know if I'm still on lim uh, minute restrictions or not. Um, I'm just really just coming out to play. Uh, but when I came out before I came back in on that last stretch, uh, trainer was asking me, how did I feel or anything like that? I was like, look, whatever minutes that are on the table for me to go out there and be able to play, I'll play the rest of the game if I have to. You know, I just want to be out there to be able to help the team. I mean, I went out there and did my thing, you know. Do you ever feel that, you know, you're just in a groove defensively and does that give you like extra confidence to even, you know, challenge some shots even more? Yeah, I would say, you know, just really defense leads to easy offense sometimes. And, you know, you block a shot, you got a guy that comes in behind you, rebounds that, and we run in transition. So, I mean, as long as I don't fall on the floor like I did a couple of times tonight when it came to blocking a shot, if I block the shot, we get a rebound, we run in transition, you know, we can beat, you know, at least three people down the floor, get an easy basket. And that happened a couple of times tonight. So that's just my main thing, protecting the basket, running the transition. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Samir. Hey, Daniel. Um, obviously, the talk is that you blocked Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram down the stretch, but it's about two minutes left in the game, a little over. You had an end one layup off the feet from Bradley Beal. Um, what did that do to you necessarily down the stretch? Did that fire you up at all, or was it just business as usual? Yeah, it got me fired up because it got me locked in because I missed like three before that, you know? Um, I wasn't finishing around the basket before that. And when I got that in one, it kind of, kind of got me back in my groove. I really wasn't trying to dwell on it mentally. But once I made that shot and I made the free throw, that's what got me back locked in really on the offensive end. Because, you know, I got to finish down there, whether it's a dunk or a layup. I got to make sure I put the ball in the hoop. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Chase? Uh, Daniel, w when you make plays like you did tonight, uh, you know, obviously, the games are becoming more important as you guys chase the, the playing spot. What type of reaction do you get from the veterans like Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook? I would imagine they, they encourage you and, and say some pretty nice things. Yeah, very intense high five from Russ and Brad. <laughs> but I mean, other than that, you know, it's just motivation. Just really just coming up to me, you know, good, good stuff, gal. You know, way to protect the basket, certain things like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, I really don't try to dwell on it because there's still a lot more game to play. In a situation like that, you know, I blocked the shot. You know, I think they challenged after, I think, one of the block shots that I had. And really just, you know, I was, you know, hype and everything. My energy was there. But my main thing was just really just finishing out the game. You know, I don't – I've been through multiple situations to where we celebrated way too early on lost games like that. And I don't want that – I really don't want that to happen again. <laughs> you scored 10 of the team's 12 points in overtime. Uh, just what was your mindset in that, that last period and, and what led to that? Um, just close the game. You know, we, uh, a lot of guys struggle tonight. Um, and part of my job is to kind of see, um, uh, where we need uh, some help at and, um, scoring was at tonight. Um, and I made sure I was aggressive, especially in closing uh, minutes of the game. And what do you think about the, the defense that Daniel Gafford played down the stretch and some clutch moments there? Yeah. I mean, I think it was amazing. You know, I think, um, a lot of times we didn't convert, but we got 
so many t- stops down the stretch, which was uh, was big and growth for this team. And I think um, it just shows you over the course of the season uh, when we're able to kind of put our minds to it, we can defend uh, when a game online tonight. We did a good job of that. Neil. Hey, Russ, can you expand a little bit about, you know, what you're seeing and feeling, you know, when you're saying, okay, it's closing time, you need to step up for your team. Um, can you expand on that? Yeah, you know, always when I play the game, I always feel like the game will tell you what to do. Um, so some nights it may be passing. Maybe you need to go help rebound. You may need to defend a little better. Uh, you may need to uh, lead a little better. Um, and sometimes you may be scoring. Um, and for me, as I, as the game goes on, I always try to figure out how I can impact the game. Um, and when the game's online, uh, at this t- particular time, was my job to score. And um, I'm able to do that as well at a high level. And um, tonight I did it. And given the way that the game was officiated up until overtime, were you surprised at all that you got the call uh, with one second left? <clears throat> no, I wasn't surprised. It was a foul. Um, you know, if it wouldn't have been a foul, then it would have been a bucket. So. Yeah. Russ, I know this time of year is not new to you in terms of getting ready for a playoff run, but it, it's – uh, it's it's new to this group, <laughs> and I wonder what you what you're seeing from them uh, in terms of growth and maturity that they're able to maybe close out some of these games they couldn't close out earlier. Yeah, I mean, just um, ability to be able to fight, um, ability to be able to lean on each other. Um, that's the biggest thing, especially this time of year. Um, you want to make sure that you're connected as a team, uh, regardless of what happened in the first half of the season, regardless of injuries and COVID and the whole nine, regardless of any of those excuses now, it was all that matters. And uh, as long as we're together and, con- and connected, um, as we've seen tonight, is we can be a pretty special as a team. It, it, it looks, and it, you mentioned the defense, and it does seem like there is more connectivity. How does that show up on the floor? Um, you just see everybody communicating, talking. Um, you see everybody's into it. Uh, everybody's helping each other up on the ground. The, the small things are important, and I try to make sure I em- emphasize that to our team. Um, that the little things matter. Everybody see the big stats, big plays, but the small details matter. Pushing mm-hmm. catches out, using our hands, boxing out, uh, rebounding the ball, getting on the floor. The small details matter um, when good teams are tonight. Um, and even, you know, recently we've been doing a good job of uh, small details in the show tonight.